with you guys got another video on safe steps for installing device drivers the right way now asus driver hub is a brand new feature that's allowing you to install drivers onto your computer safely you can see we have a brand new computer here with unknown device drivers and this can be very tricky for people to find the correct driver maybe they don't know what their motherboard name is and they don't know where to find drivers so they go on the internet and they start downloading drivers off the internet, which could be really dangerous. You can end up getting your PC infected. This method, I think, is so foolproof. It's really useful for a lot of people that are beginners that want to find drivers for their computer. Now, Asus Driver Hub is a pretty decent bit of kit. This is the first time I've actually used it because I've just built myself a brand new computer. We're going to accept their terms and conditions and it says installation successful. When we click finished, it will automatically open up a web page and take you directly to the exact location you need to be at to download the drivers for your motherboard, which I think is absolutely excellent. So you can see here, we've got a list of drivers that we need to install on this computer. So all you need to do here is choose what drivers you need and you can then click on uh, install all and it will go ahead and download the correct drivers from their website and install them onto your computer now i know a lot of people uh, will use other particular types of methods like for instance driver packs or even uh, using driver software from other sources third-party sources but this can be dangerous because you can end up using the wrong type of software and getting your pc infected and this is a very common way of causing yourself problems. Also, downloading the wrong drivers can corrupt the system and you can end up with major problems. So using this method, I think what ASUS have put into place is super easy and it is literally foolproof. So many times I've seen people that are having issues with their computer and they just simply just don't know what these drivers are, these unknown drivers, and they go searching the internet for answers and they end up going to shady sites and downloading the wrong type of drivers from those sites. And you just have no clue of what's inside them. Another plus for this particular method is Microsoft will generally download and install drivers from the Windows Update section. And what that can be is old, outdated drivers, which can also cause problems. So this method right here, where you just install the software and it will directly go straight off to their website and pull the right drivers down for you. I think it's going to be great for the beginner. Now, of course, if you're a little bit more advanced, you might already know the motherboard manufacturer name and model number, and you will be able to find the website and go there and manually download the ones that you want to download. Also, another major problem is during the installation process, sometimes drivers are needed Another key problem is loading the IRST driver uh, to install an operating system like Windows 11 on, uh, say, for instance, a NVMe driver, brand new drive. Without that driver, sometimes the drive is invisible and you can't install Windows on that drive because it's invisible. So you'd need to load the driver up. And you can see here on these images that you'd have to load the drive up uh, in this manner. So you'd have to have the driver downloaded first. And the way you can do that is by creating a folder called driver inside your Windows USB flash drive and keep it inside there with all the drivers that you need. And during the loading up process, you can load it up and install Windows and carry on. This method basically does it right at the desktop where it would automatically load up the Asus hub driver uh, software which will then go off and download all of the necessary drivers for you and install you would still need to do this uh, if you had one of the intel drivers there for your nvme uh, it's always good to have that on a drive anyway and you can integrate drivers as well into iso files if you wanted to do that you can do i've made videos showing you how to do that if you want to see an updated video on that topic then let me know in the comment section down below I'm going to let these install and then we'll reboot the PC and we'll see how easy it is to get up and running onto the desktop once we've installed all of these drivers. You can already see they're disappearing right here, which is very useful for beginners that aren't quite familiar 
with how to find particular types of drivers. And this particular method, I think, is super easy. And the most important thing to take from it is it's super safe rather than going off on the Internet and downloading random drivers from websites that you have no clue of what's inside them. So what we we'll do here is I'm just going to quickly check device manager right here. We're probably going to need to quickly reboot the system uh, because it seems to be waiting for a reboot here. So what I'm going to do is reboot the PC. It's going to install all of the drivers that it's downloaded and installed already. And uh, once we get back to the desktop, we could just run that application one more time and it will go off and download whatever's left and installed it onto the computer. Now, like I said, new PCs nowadays, uh, they, they used to install all the drivers automatically. But for some reason, just lately, I've noticed drivers are like the old days where they're not getting installed. And this can be very problematic for people, especially network drivers. That is the most common problem where they wipe the system clean and they end up having no network driver to connect to the Internet to download drivers where this one seemed to have just at least one driver. I think they have tried to remedy that problem with having some form of network driver capability so we can get out onto the Internet and download the rest of the drivers. That's why I always say that head to the manufacturer's website and download all of the drivers manually and keep them in a folder. And that way, when you're installing Windows, at least you have the drivers to hand. You don't need an Internet connection or another computer to download these drivers and get them installed. So that is the Asus Driver Hub, a pretty decent uh, bit of software. I'm just going to run it one more time because I think there's one more driver that we need to get right here, and that shouldn't take too long. So let's go ahead and run it one more time here and run the Asus Driver Hub and get that downloaded. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below what you think about the Asus Driver Hub and whether it's a decent tool for beginners who don't understand how to get drivers and where to get them and how to check hardware IDs on drivers and things like that. And this is how people end up getting themselves into major problems. So what it's going to do now is quickly scan the system one more time. It says there's three more updates. So we're going to let these run and let the system uh, reboot one more time. I just want to take this time to thank every single person that left a comment on my last video it really was touching to see so much support from people and so many kind words. I really do appreciate everyone who has uh, made a contribution to the comment section of that video to show their support. It has been a pretty tough couple of days, and it's really you guys that have actually inspired me to actually continue and make more videos. And if you're wondering why my voice sounds so funny, it's because I'm using a pair of headphones to do the audio because my Rodecaster Pro 2 has seemed to given up the ghost for some reason and it's not working. That's a 600 odd pound piece of equipment uh, with microphones and everything else that I have, which takes it up into, you know, a couple of thousand pounds to get good quality audio for you guys. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to try to fix this myself and get it up and running. Uh, and hopefully we'll be back to having better audio either in the next video or the video after that. Hopefully, if I can't, I'll have to just bite the bullet and buy a new one because obviously this one's not that old. It's only a, a couple of years old. Anyway, with that said, we'll just finish off the video right here. And you can see all the drivers are now installed and we are back up and running with no problem at all, no searching on the internet, no, uh, you know, trying to search for IDs for drivers. It's found all the drivers it needs. You can then just go to Windows updates and basically update the system. Now, what I would advise you to do is pause your updates here while you're doing your driver updates. That way, Microsoft are not going to pull down drivers and put old drivers on your system and maybe cause you more problems. I couldn't respond to everyone in the comments section, but I have made a community post on my YouTube channel so you can go and check that out. And I really do appreciate everyone's support in this difficult time. Anyway, just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I do appreciate the support. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.